What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. This time I have a really quick video for you where I tested some thermal interfaces, interfaces, there's more than one. So I have tested four thermal compounds and one thermal pad. The testing method I used is similar to the testing method I use for the CPU coolers. So I ran four tests that had the package power on the CPU running at 150 watts. The length of the test depends on how long it takes the CPU to reach a steady state. Now the way I'm actually getting these numbers is from those four tests, I take five minutes of data from after the CPU reaches a steady state. And then I modify the temperatures to reflect a 22 Celsius room temperature. Then I average all the tests together, giving us the average CPU temperature from 1200 cells of data. Now the test system I used was the Ryzen 9 3900 XT was the CPU. For the motherboard, I used the MSI B550 Tomahawk. The CPU cooler I used was the Fractal Design Celsius S24, where I had the fans and the pump running at full speed. The GPU I was using was the GT1030. The power supply was the RM550X, and I was running 32 gigs of G-Skill Flare X RAM at 3200 megahertz. And this was all on the QDIY open air frame. I've done a video on it. It's actually a pretty cool little chassis thing. I'll link a card above. Now onto the charts because I did say this was going to be a pretty quick video. And the results I got were not all that exciting. The MX5 had an average temperature of 77.2. The MX2 had an average temperature of 77.4. The Master Gel Pro, which is the thermal compound that came with the Hyper 212 Evo, had an average temperature of 77.9. And the MX4 had an average temperature of 78.3. Now the IC Graphite Pad was a fair bit higher up there with an average temperature of 85.4. Now the margin of error I have on these tests is plus minus 0.5 Celsius. So that means all four of these thermal compounds are pretty much within the margin of error of one another. Now the graphite thermal pad is definitely outside that margin of error, which is one of the reasons why I put it into the testing is just to make sure that the testing was working the way it should be. And it was because I even retested some of the thermal compounds and this is what I got. Now I just wanted to let you guys know that the MX4 that I used in this testing was from a tube that I previously bought about two years ago or so. Now this shouldn't make much of a difference because the shelf life of MX4 is supposed to be like eight years. The thermal consi the consistency of the thermal paste was perfectly normal. It wasn't thick, it wasn't liquidy. It's what it's always been. Like I don't think the age of it had anything to do with where it ended up on the list. So there you have it, from the four thermal compounds I tested, it doesn't really seem to make any difference whatsoever which one you use. Now I am willing to come back to this if there are any thermal compounds that you guys would like me to take a look at, and if there are, just list them down in the comments. And as I said before, this was going to be a quick one, and that is all that I have. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Please follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT. I also have a Discord server. The link is in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.